Today we're giving our trailer quite the upgrade. This one was broken and bent, but it was a snap ring, so it was really quick and easy to install the Kurt snap ring swivel trailer jack. When it comes to jacks, you wanna make sure you get the right capacity. I think that is pretty much the most important part. We don't wanna overload this jack. This one's gonna have a capacity of 2,000 pounds. So if we have 2,000 pounds loaded up on here, it's not gonna damage our jack. Also, from the ground to the bottom tube of our trailer, it's about 14 and a quarter inches. And we're gonna have a total lift with the Kurt about 15 inches from there. So right now it's completely as low as it can possibly go. So we can go 15 inches up from here. So if you do have a jacked up truck, I think that's gonna be plenty to get it up onto your ball. With all of these retaining ring swivel jacks, you do have a little bit of play back and forth. So as you can see here on our old one, that's kind of where it bent in. And that's just because it has this big old round foot plate on it. So it's pretty much the same size all the way around. So the Kurt is not gonna have that issue because you notice how the side that was bent on our other one, one, it's already pre-bent and two, there's not a whole lot of material over here. So there's not gonna be a whole lot of leverage to really bend this plate. It is a pretty big plate compared to our replacement one that we took off. So the width, it's gonna be about four inches by about seven inches. The inner tube and the foot plate is gonna have a coating on it, which is gonna help resist it against rust and corrosion. And notice how it is welded on the bottom here. So this is not gonna be a drop leg jack or one that we can put a wheel on it. We do have some of those, so if you want that, go ahead and grab it here at E-Trailer. And then moving on up, our bigger tube right here, it does have a nice powder coated finish, so it's also going to resist against rust and corrosion. The jack we took off of this trailer did not have a grease circ, so the gears ended up failing on us. So with this grease circ, we can grease it up depending on how often you use it. I use mine like every other weekend or so, and I grease it up about every six months to a year. But as your frequency of use goes up, the more often you want to kind of maintain those gears. So it's gonna make sure that we're not gonna have the same issue as we did before. This is a top wound jack. So from the center here to the center of the outside right here is about six and a half inches. We do have a plastic piece right here. So it's gonna rotate as we start to raise this up or lower it down. So if you do have a lot of stuff going on up here, let's just say I had a toolbox on the front, this probably won't be the best option for you. We do have side wind jacks. So if you wanna go with one of those, that might be better if you got a lot going on up top. A lot of you are wondering which jack's gonna be faster. In my opinion, most of them are pretty much the same exact gear ratio on the inside. What really helps make it a little bit faster is how long this arm's gonna be, because one rotation with a longer arm is gonna turn the gears a little bit more than a shorter arm. But I just think they're all pretty much the same. So if you're wondering which one's the fastest, I think they're all pretty much the same thing. But whenever we're done hooking up to our trailer, we have this little pull pin, pull it like that. And then we can go ahead and rotate it. So let me get one more measurement for you. A lot of the times you put some breakaway switches or some junction boxes on the side of your trailer. So when it's completely retracted, it's gonna be about 21 inches or so. So keep that in mind especially if you add stuff to your trailer or if you're finding a good place to put your mount. Kurt's a pretty premium brand, but this is one of the more entry level options when it comes to jacks. If you wanna go up in quality, you can go ahead and check out our website. We do have a lot of them, but the main thing with these is just make sure that you get the right capacity. We don't wanna overload our jacks and end up in the same position as we started with. So definitely take that into consideration. Also size, the closer you can get it down to the ground before we have to start cranking, the quicker and easier it's gonna to be to get it loaded off and onto your trailer. First thing we're gonna to wanna to do is put a jack or just hook it up to your truck to get the trailer off the ground. And then we can remove whatever one we had before. So if you do have another one of these already welded onto your trailer like we do, it's right there. You don't have to use the one that comes with the kit, but it does give you one. And all you really have to do is when it comes out of the box, it's gonna be like this. And we just need to rotate it to where we can get the snap ring off. So then we can remove this. 
and then you can either weld this or just toss it and use the existing one on your trailer. What I usually like to do is take the jack, put it up like this, and then at least just get the foot plate down to the ground so I don't have to hold it up. This way, it stays on there. I wanna make sure it's nice and flush to the bracket that's on our trailer. And then we can install our snap ring. You're gonna need some snap ring pliers, which will just go in here like this. Spread it out and then we'll slide it in and get the snap ring into place. And just work it into that little groove on the back. And then once it's kind of where it needs to be, you can take the tool and kind of push it until it snaps into that little tiny groove there. If you don't have your trailer hooked up to your truck, we can now jack it up, remove the jack, and we're good to go. And that'll do it for a look at the Kurt Snap Ring Swivel Trailer Jack.